All right. Our first caller is David from California. Hey, what's up, David? How can we help you? Hey, guys. How's it going? Uh, first of all, thank you for all that you do. I, I, um, I really appreciate it. I've learned a ton from the YouTube channel. Um, I had a question about how to integrate kettlebell kettlebells into a three-day-a-week full-body type program. Um, prior to the pandemic, I had been training like an upper-lower type split, um, and then when gyms closed, we tried a few home programs, eventually settled on working with kettlebells, which I actually enjoyed a lot in the absence of a barbell. Um, but when the second lock, lockdown kind of hit, um, you know, we finally couldn't take it. We bought a rig for the patio, you know, barbell, squat rack, bench, all the stuff we need. Um, and I'm so happy to be kind of back lifting heavy weights. And so uh, I was able to, to recognize a ton of value um, from the kettlebell training, which was new to me at the time. So I guess my question is, how can I best integrate some kettlebell training into a more bar barbell dominant three day per week full body type program and still like optimize the benefits of both? Yeah, that's a good question. I need more information though. What are your fitness goals? Cause that, that makes a difference. Um, definitely strength, um, strength aesthetics. Um, <laughs> okay. Yeah. So, so you're looking to get stronger <laughs> and, and look good. Okay. So stronger, look better. So kettlebells are uh, another form of resistance, just like dumbbells, barbells, you know, cables, or even resistance bands. And uh, yeah. now, if your if your goals were a little bit different, let's say your goals were athletic performance, or then my answer might be a little different. But your your goals are pretty general. I want to get stronger. Yeah. I want to look better. In that case, what you want to do is you want to look at the tools that you're going to use for resistance training, and use them for uh, in the, with the exercises that they're best suited for. For example. Uh, if you're going to do loaded squats and you want to go heavy, uh, it's hard to beat a barbell. Barbell is going to be one mm -hmm. of your best tools for heavy, you know, loaded squats. Um, if you're going to do a windmill, um, kettlebells are one of the best uh, devices you can use. And that mainly has to do with the way that the weight is loaded and how it sits on your forearm. So there's a few exercises I love kettlebells for. I love them for kettlebell-specific exercises. So like swings, uh, obviously you want to do swings, you're going to use a kettlebell over a dumbbell or a barbell. I love mm -hmm. shoulder presses. Uh, overhead presses are awesome with a kettlebell. It's a totally different feel. The weight sits lower on the arm, so it's a shorter lever, and it encourages this kind of straight line spiraling effect when you do an overhead press. You could also mm -hmm. use kettlebells for some exercises to change the way that the tension feels on the body. For example... When you do a fly, a chest fly, if you use kettlebells, you'll notice you have a different feeling with the tension when you drop the weight and then when you bring it up because the weight sits outside of your arms. Um, so you could play with that you know, as well. But honestly, my favorite exercise with kettlebells are carries, swings, uh, and overhead presses, uh, uh, Turkish get-ups, and um, what did I say? Windmills. Those are probably the best exercises I could think of with kettlebells. And I would put those in to replace dumbbell and barbell exercises for those kind of respective body parts or, or goals. Yeah, it sounds to me, <clears throat> well, uh, I know back in the day we, we had like a, a smaller program out. It was kettlebell for aesthetics. But we just basically took a lot of... Uh, you know, common exercises, and we put them together in kind of an aesthetic type routine. Uh, there's a lot of versatility with kettlebells is the point to that. So, uh, you know, if your goal is to get strong, but also like really trying to shape your body, like there's a way to do that uh, by loading kettlebells. I like to use them personally more for uh, unilateral type training. And, and to, mm -hmm. it really complements uh, like barbell training uh, very well because it's such a different stimulus and it's such a different way to uh, you know, load the body and have to account for that. Uh, and like Sal said, with, with unique moves like windmills or bent presses uh, or things where there's a lot more rotation. So any chance that you can add rotation, like in your rows, in your overhead pressing, uh, you, you know, any kind of pressing, I think it's, it's, it's a very valuable tool for that, uh, because of the way it's loaded. So, um, I honestly, I think that even if you have a, an established barbell routine you're already doing, you can also add that in as like accessory lifts. So uh, David, I have a question for you. Are you, are, are we looking to add the kettlebell exercises into the three day week routine, or are you looking to potentially complement that on off days with the kettlebells? Is that an option or are we sticking with the three day routine that, cause that changes my answer. Yeah. I'm not married to three days. I mean, I kind of was going with three days because once I switched back to, um, doing like a full, full body routine, it just worked better for me. Um, but I, I think, you know, having the, the rig on my patio has made it a little bit easier to, 
you know, get out there when I can. So I think, you know, I'm not married to three days necessarily, maybe, maybe more as a complimentary type of, uh, type okay. of. Okay, yeah. cool. Cause that definitely changes my answer. So at first, I mean, your main goal is strength in the way you look. So to be honest, like yeah. running the three body, uh, three, three day a week barbell routine is going to get you the most strength and probably build like the best aesthetic physique. Now, I love to use kettlebells. How I and your goals kind of align with kind of my goals. So how I like to do it is I normally pick one, two, three max of these kettlebell exercises that the guys both brought up, and I I might do that on an just on an off day. So like I have my three full full body routine day or a routine, and then in the middle in there I might do Turkish get ups, windmills, and carries. That's it. You know, it'll be a 20, 30 minute type of routine. And I'm just going to practice the skill of those movements. One thing that's cool about kettlebells is they, they're definitely high skill type of exercises and, and takes a lot of practice to get good at it. You probably will have to work on some mobility if you are limited in some movements like windmills and things yeah. like that. And like Turkish get up, which I think is really challenging. So I like to just pick one or two of those, those movements and just practice them and get good at it. And I would either one, add them into my three day a week routine or two set a day aside where it's like, this is my like kind of functional day. I'm just going to work on mobility. I'm going to work on these two or three kettlebell movements. And the goal is not to push the weight really hard. It's just to get better at the movement that will carry over into your three day, three day routine. And you're not your desired outcome when you're training the kettlebells is more about the movement and the art of it and the skill of it versus like really hammering the weights, save the hammering the weights and your growth and your strength and changing your physique for the three day a week routine. That's how I would do it. And by the way, there's no wrong answer here. I think everything that everybody said, it works. It's really finding what works best for you. Got it. That's awesome. No, that's, uh, that helps a lot. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. No problem, David. Very Thanks cool. for calling in. Yeah, it's uh, I, you know, I never used kettlebell. Actually, a lot of most people didn't use kettlebells for a long time, and then mm -hmm. I don't know. It was probably what? What'd you say? Like you wouldn't even find them in gyms back in the day. No, I think it was what the like early nineties. I think it really started to take off. Yeah, but I didn't really see them. Yeah, I was gonna say just I remember two thousand. Well, I guess I was uh, an early adopter. Yeah, yeah, you were you were. But even when you worked for me at Hillsdale, there wasn't a kettlebell in there. No, yeah, that's no. true. It wasn't in the gyms. No, uh, I had to go. I had to go seek. Yeah, it, there so. was always. So I always had like, and it started probably in oh five oh six. I was gonna say like early 2000s. Yeah, 05, 06, I'd say. I'd always have like one trainer. That yeah. one guy who was like into like different moves. Usually it was a Russian guy. The because, guy who read Pavel's book. Yeah, yeah. yeah. well, because too, one of, one of the main reasons why it wasn't adopted early by your normal big gym trainer was because it was like a $1,000, $1,500 certification. It was yeah. really expensive. It was yeah. very expensive to get certified in kettlebells. And, and nobody or, just, nobody knew how to use them. You know, right. you know the irony is kettlebells yeah. are the original weights. They're the free, the yeah. first free weights were kettlebells in fact that's what were, that's what dumbbells were called because it was a bell that didn't make sound mm -hmm. uh, and then somebody created the dumbbell used the term and then they had to change the name to kettlebell but they've been around for a long time you could see the, the very first strongmen who were using weights they didn't have dumbbells they had barbells with round ends and then they had kettlebells and i didn't use them for a long time and to be quite honest you know aside from the kettlebell specific exercises like you're not going to do a swing with a, a dumbbell or a barbell very well at all right um there are some exercises i think even traditional exercises that i think kettlebells are better for yeah. Yeah. overhead presses if, i prefer a kettlebell overhead press to a dumbbell over if i had to pick and i like them both i'll do yeah. them both but if I had to pick, I like the kettlebell version. Well, better. there's a reason for that, right? It follows the natural spiraling of the shoulder as you press for one and two. It's loaded on the back of your wrist, which naturally it pulls helps pull your back. It helps right. pull back. the arms mm -hmm. back behind your. One of the number one problems when teaching a shoulder press to almost any and every client is the the you know the the forward shoulders when they press up the arching of the low back mm -hmm. loading the kettlebells on the back of the wrist when you press it follows that spiral rotation and in addition to that it puts the it's weight It's also just there. a fuller range of motion. I mean you could do an Arnold press I guess with a dumbbell but with a kettlebell it's like it, it's ideal for for something like yeah, that. Yeah, it's one of the oldest tools out there, you know, that uh, has still has relevance today. So it's like one of those things like obviously uh, it's stood the test of time for a reason.